Welcome to Optimal Game Days. Today we're going to talk about competitive and casual games. And to do this, we're going to look at Kill Team and we're going to look at Warcry. Now, coming into this, you might have thought that this is some sort of um, putting them against each other. Uh, you know, I do a lot of Warcry content. I do some Kill Team content, but not as much as Warcry. So you might think I'm coming in here saying, Warcry is great, play Warcry. And uh, I've certainly seen uh, other uh, content creators talk about how great their game is and how the other game isn't maybe that good. I'm going to put a bit of a spin on that whole thing because honestly, I do think these are basically the same game. And that's the case I'm going to make. So at the first part of this video, I'm going to look at some of the similarities and some of the differences. And I'm going to try make the case that basically Kill Team and Warcry are the same game with some minor variations. If that is the case, why is one considered to be casual? So Warcry is often considered to be a casual game, whereas Kill Team is considered to be quite competitive. If they are both the same game, what's going on here? And I'm going to try and make the case that this is all presentation and perception. So yeah, basically the way each game is pitched and each game has been presented, modern design presented, uh, kind of favors one over the other but both games can be played so there is definitely a competitive war cry scene if you have a look on uh, wartally.com i did a recent video on that you can see some tournament lists there are some great content providers out there for war cry talking about the super competitive lists and how to really you know optimize your choices and your decisions similarly kill team has a lot of that content um, but it's a little bit harder to get the kind of casual narrative uh, stories out there. But they do exist. And look, we're going into a new edition of Kill Team, and we're going to be seeing co-op and solo play, which really is about as casual as you can get. And they are going to be getting that before Warcry officially does. They did get it in some Tomb of Champions. And uh, obviously, I've got a lot of material on how to do it. But, you know, Warcry doesn't really have a current supported solo and co-op, but hopefully it will. Hopefully that's something we're going to see in the future. So that's weird. It kind of puts Kill Team towards the or the, the casual side rather the competitive. Uh, all right, so let's kind of get into this topic. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a comparison just to see what the similarities and what the differences are. So this is the overall structure for both games. And it is honestly quite similar. So... This is a battle round uh, or a turning point. Uh, each turn, each round, you get four of them in both games. Uh, the, obviously, with Warcry, you've got the initiative phase, which is where you roll your dice and generate your uh, pool that you're going to be powering your abilities from. That isn't quite the case with Kill Team. Kill Team is the initial point is all about flipping your tokens, getting things ready. Um, and then we're looking at getting new CPs and kind of using some of those CPs. So yeah, command points, um, which is, again, we'll talk about that later. These are kind of similarities, but different approaches. Then we essentially, for both games, get into a point where uh, each character, each fighter is going to activate, each operative is going to activate, and then we'll go back and forth between that. So let's look at that. Let's see how each of the uh, operatives or fighters actually activate. So we have a selection of actions. So Warcry on the left, you've got move, attack, disengage, and wait. And you get two actions to take things with. Now, there's going to be a lot of complications I'm going to skip over, so I'm not going to talk about reactions. I'm not going to talk about Overwatch. Uh, but the kind of basic idea is you get two actions. So it's relatively simple with Warcry. You move, move, you attack, attack, you move, attack, you disengage and move, I guess. It's unlikely. Or you could attack and disengage. Disengage means you're getting out of combat, so it's not, you tend not to get out of combat twice. And you got this wait action, which uh, is something that beginners don't necessarily understand the value of, but basically it's a way to spend an action and then save your second action for later when you're going to use it at a more important time. It's a way of kind of controlling the tempo back and forth. Kill Team is slightly different, but almost the exact same. So what you can't do in Kill Team is you can't move, move, attack, attack. You can't double act, basically. Now, disengage and wait are things that you only do once. So if you wanted to move, move in Kill Team, you would take that normal move at the top, then you would skip down to that dash, and that dash would be your second action. So it's not as good as a normal move, um, but it's essentially a move, move. Uh, you don't get to shoot twice uh, unless you've got something special. You don't get to fight twice unless you've got something special. Um, and the charge is essentially the move and fight uh, combination kind of put together 
um, yeah, you can see there's a fallback instead of disengage. So, and then you've got a pass instead of the wait. So it's actually very, very similar. Now, uh, there is a little bit more granularity with uh, Kill Team. Uh, each fighter, each operative will have an APL action point limit. So some will, or typically most will have two action point limits. So they'll be able to take two action each turn. There are the occasional ones that'll have an extra action. And um, yeah, that's something that has a stat on the card. But like, if you look at these, they're essentially the same. Like you move and you attack. You move, move, and you attack, attack. Um, yeah, like it, they're just, there's some slight variations, but basically it's, it's the same style of game. The next thing I want to look at is the cards. So here we have the Warcry card, and here we have Kill Team card. Now, I've cheated a little bit. I've used the, the new Kill Team card. So we don't fully know all the details of what the new edition is like, but we're going to have a look. We're going to have a comparison. There are obviously some basic comparisons. So we've got the four and the arrow on that um, Sylvaneth fighter. And then we've got move six inches for the Aquilian Trooper. So they're the same. So it's just moving and how many inches they can move. The wounds, similar. So at the bottom with that skull, that's the wounds for Warcry. That's 12 wounds there. And the Aquilian Trooper has eight wounds, which you can see on the right-hand side. For APL, APL doesn't appear anywhere on uh, the Warcry card. It's assumed to be two. Um, and... Uh, they then the saves are different. So Warcry does have toughness. So toughness is something that you look at when you're uh, trying to work out how what you need to hit on. Whereas with saves, your that's the value you need to roll on your save. Now, as far as I'm aware, with this new edition, I suspect you're going to be rolling three dice on your saves. So the previous edition did actually say how many dice you were rolling in defense. I think based off of the recent. What was it? A Dark Tide game. I think they they have were maybe piloting some of the new mechanics there. I think they possibly have standardized it as a flat a flat number of dice for it. Then on Warcry for the actual weapon profile, we've got a range of two. Kill Team doesn't have ranges listed here. The Hotshot Last Carbine uh, is infinite range essentially, and then the fists. You've got that melee symbol, so you know it is just a melee one. From reading some of the previews, it does look like there is a general rule that pistols are all six inches. In the previous edition or the current edition, uh, you would normally see that in the, the special rules. So it would have specifically said it. So range is on both essentially, but it's um, explicit on the Warcry card and implied on the Kill Team card. Uh, then we've got the number of dice you roll. So for Warcry, it's that three, that sword with a bunch of symbols around it. And then it's just attack for uh, the Kill Team one. So that hot shot, Lazgar by rolling four dice. Uh, then to actually hit, you're looking for three pluses. Uh, the Warcry equivalent, it has strength. So we mentioned that with toughness before. Basically what you're doing is you're comparing strength and toughness to work out what your to hit is going to be. So that's how they kind of uh, factor in the toughness of a target. Um, so yeah, something that's tougher is going to be a little bit harder to hit. And then, you know, it'll kind of, depend on the wounds and how lucky you take it out whereas with kill team the actual hit roll is static but the save is then reducing the number of hits that you've taken both systems use hits and crits so you can see that in the damage so three and four for the sylvanet and then three and four for that last carbine and two and three for the fist so the first one is what you uh, what damage you're doing on a hit and the second one's what damage you crit same system um okay so here's where the differences really come in you can see that uh, the Warcry card is relatively simple. They've got plenty of space for the pictures. And that's because they tend not to have special rules here. Now, not featuring on this one is uh, they can have more of those kind of circle special symbols and they unlock additional abilities. Abilities pretty much always are limited to the uh, special uh, to the dice. So the dice are kind of equivalent, as we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, to the command points. So Warcry tends not to have special rules that are related to um, a fighter or a weapon, but instead has, uh, it opens up options. It opens up command point option equivalents. Now, as you can see on the Quidian Trooper, they've got rapid insert, they've got swift landing. Uh, not added in here um, because we don't really have anything special with the hot, hot, hot shot Laz Carbine, but often you'll have special rules like, um, 
rending or you know minus one ap or something like that so there's a lot more kind of special rules now if you wanted that is something you could add into warcry but they tend not to have those exceptions but so we've got a case where the profiles are very very similar in many regards but the big difference is you have these special rules that are being added on to the kill team version all right so we talked a little bit about the, the, the hit systems let's actually have a look and see what the comparisons are okay so on the left hand side we've got uh, we've got Warcry, and the right-hand side, we've got the two kill team ones. So with Warcry, the process is you pick your weapon, you then roll, and then you work out what the damage is. And I quite like this system. It's a single roll set. It's nice and fast and has its own advantages. The, the hit values change, though. So we don't have the, the hit value on the actual card itself. Instead, it is calculated. So you have a look at the strength of the attacker and the toughness of the defender, and that will change what's happening. So one or two is always going to be a miss, no matter what. Six is always going to be a crit, and then it's just in between values. So yeah, if the strength is greater than the toughness, three to five is considered a hit. It's equal, four to five. And if it's lower, then only fives. Fives and sixes are the only things that are going to do damage. It's a pretty straightforward system. As I said, I really like it. With... Um, I will say that uh, I do think that there kind of should be a, a another element to that if the strength is double that, the toughness, or if the strength is half or less than the toughness. I think that's something that they could add in just to add uh, an extra little incentive. So the problem is if you've got strength four, then you're looking to hit toughness three things, but toughness one and two are still the same. Uh, so you only want to be one ahead of something. So you don't really, if you're fighting against toughness two enemies, for example, you want to be at toughness three. If you're paying to get, or sorry, you want to be at strength three. If you're paying to strength four, it's kind of wasted. And I think that's where we could add in a little bit of that extra element. And that's something that's coming from Blood Bowl. Uh, Blood Bowl, when you're uh, looking at the opposing strength, there is a kind of a double one that lets you roll three dice go out and roll two. All right, that's that. Now I'm going to look at uh, the two kill team ones in a little more detail. So let's have a look. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we've got the ranged one. Now, this is a lot more detailed, there's a lot more um, going on, but it is relatively straightforward. So you select your target, you picked your weapon already, you roll your attack dice. Here's the difference, the defender rolls their defense dice, uh, and uh, then, yeah, then you basically use a defender dice to remove successes from the attacker's dice roll, then you calculate the damage. On the right-hand side, we have the uh, melee version of it that's a little bit more back and forth, uh, and the reason is both players are rolling attack dice. So the idea here is that the defender, if they wish, can strike. So parrying is what they will do to remove damage, but striking is what they'll do to actually inflict damage. So the defender has an opportunity to do more damage. What's interesting about this particular system is if you know you're going to die, you don't bother defending. You just strike, 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 strike. And that, yeah, that adds an element to it. So Warcry does kind of have some of that in that it has the reaction option. And sometimes what people will do is counter. So if they think that they're going to die, they'll spend one of their remaining actions in a counter reaction. And then that means some damage gets done back for every miss that the attacker makes. Now, what I think is interesting here is that we start off with a kind of a black box situation. Uh, we have our attacker and our defender. Some dice are rolled and then damage is inflicted. So which system is better? The answer is neither. You may have preferences. If I do think there is definitely merit to the Warcry system because it's a single dice roll, so it's super fast. What's interesting about the kill team system is that it is a lot, a lot more granular, which means you can get more special rules in that are kind of doing interesting things. So where you can have a re-rolls, where you can adjust uh, the save value. You know, you've lots of little kind of things that you can kind of go back and forth. One thing that I do think is incorrect is to say that it is more tactical because I don't believe it is. Um, and that might be a little bit controversial to say, but I think there is always an optimal path for each player after the dice are rolled, especially with melee. There is always going to be the best decision whether you should strike or parry. 
and the skill is making the right decision. So personally, I believe there's a, it, it, you want personal choice and I, you want better degrees of variation within that to kind of express your, your tactical skill, I guess. But with this, these mechanics in Kill Team, you roll the dice, there is an optimal path. Uh, you want good players to pick that optimal path and hopefully you're not going to make mistakes and then you know the, the numbers come out again so i do know that saying that might be a little controversial i've heard uh, some of even the warcry players talking about how they think it could be more engaging to use this system uh, for warcry uh, but i will say that while there is some merit to it and i believe the big merit is, is you feel more engaged if you're rolling dice to defend then it feels like you're doing things whereas with warcry you know the dice get rolled and you don't feel like you're uh, doing much because you're not doing anything you're just waiting for your opponents to, to finish up what they're doing but from a mechanics point of view from a numbers point of view you know there is a black box and out of the black box some damage happens you can work out an algorithm for both systems and honestly they can be quite similar because yeah you have some values to start with and you have some damage at the end all right so that I, I totally disagree with the idea of Warcry moving over to the system. I, I'm not suggesting that uh, Kill Team necessarily should move over to the system. There's definitely engagement, but Warcry benefits from being faster and uh, Kill Team benefits for being more granular and uh, maybe a little bit more engaging with the back and forth. Okay, so a little controversial. We also have uh, those tokens at the bottom. So this indicates essentially whether uh, your operative is concealed or... Um, out in the open essentially whether they've they've gone hot so i quite like uh, that now i don't think there's necessarily much value in that for warcry because warcry tends to be a lot more about getting into melee they do have ranged units uh, and you know they have places but not to the same extent as the kill team game does so with kill team it is more important to have you know people uh, sneaking around and being quiet and avoiding getting shot uh, which is less of a problem for Warcry. All right, that might be one of my more controversial takes. Uh, if you have a particular preference, you know, that is absolutely fine. I'm not falling uh, to say that one is better than the other, just that they both have their own merits. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about is the kind of special abilities section. So I've already talked about how Warcry cards and characters tend not to have abilities and stats. Sorry, abil uh, special abilities. And instead, everything is moved over to um, uh, powered by the dice, the abilities of paradise. So the Warcry cards open or have traits have, that will open up access to the abilities. And then you roll the dice and then you use those dice to power those abilities. The other approach is with Kill Team. So obviously, what I've mentioned Kill Team has like the static abilities, the static traits that you might see on a weapon, but it also has uh, command points. And you spend those command points for special things. So what happens with your command points is you slowly build them up and then when you want to do something excited you spend them they're static you have a rough idea of how many you're going to get each turn they're you know pretty reliable to a certain extent they can cause problems because um in the previous edition not even this edition not the next edition but the previous edition i do i did spend a lot of time playing some of the astartes ones and with that you tended to just keep all your CP to just spend on the one that would keep your, your space Marines alive. It was just so good. You know, you tended not to go for anything else. Warcry kind of puts a different spin on that. Um, and it has, there's like a legacy of games previously existing. I'm a big fan of the Saga war game series, for example, which uses a similar system. So you're rolling some dice and then you're using those dice to power abilities. That is randomness but it's kind of a bounded randomness. So if you have an ability that's a double, that's very, very reliable. Getting a double is not hard in Warcry. A triple, it's a little harder. A quad is difficult to get your hands on. So unlike with a uh, kill team, where you've got, you know, one CP, two CP, three CP, three CP is still reliable. You're just getting more of an investment to it. A quad you are getting a bigger investment of it. Technically it's four dice rather than, you know, two twos, for example, but it is harder to get access to. So you can have it kind of big and splashier, but it's less reliable. 
with Warcry, you do have a lot more decisions to make around your abilities. Sometimes you are locked out of abilities that you would like to use and you can't do that. So there is that kind of randomness is a kind of a little bit of a frustration. So I do understand why people don't particularly like that. My point here, <laughs> and I guess I'll talk about differences more later, is to say that they're basically the same system, just two different approaches. It's a limited resource. It's a special ability. You use your limited resources to power the special abilities. Make sense? Okay, so these are the similarities. I know I'm kind of spinning around some of the differences as well. Um, but as I said, with the, with the previous attack system, you roll some dice, some damage is done. With these ones, you have some resources, you spend them, you get some special abilities. Okay, so that was me. I was kind of getting off track every so often, but I was making the case here that we're looking at the same game, just presented slightly differently. And even, I think this is even a good example, like they're both on the same board size. Uh, they all got, you know, multi-level terrain because they jump up and down, move around. Uh, there's cards everywhere. There's, you know, similar numbers of dice. Uh, both have slightly different rulers, but they do have rulers. Yeah, I, I honestly do feel that these are very, very, very similar games, arguably the same games with a slightly different spin. Now let's go back to the main topic. Why is Warcry considered to be casual and Kill Team is considered to be competitive? I think it's because of the presentation and the approaches that uh, have been taken with the release systems. So these, I think, are one of the bigger ones. So the battle plan cards, this was a box that uh, you could get separately, but uh, came out with the main core box and then they continue to add more of these battle plan cards the way you generated a mission a, a, for Warcry was to draw some of these cards out randomly now they do have a subsection of narrative ones uh, and sorry of competitive ones so match play they do have a match play selection but the default is just a big pile you shuffle them up you draw them out and then you get what is it so it's a the train there's a deployment there's a victory and there's a twist a lot of people have said that warcry is way too random because sometimes you go into a game and then you've already uh, lost a mission straight away that's not wrong but the reason is because you're using these random battle plan cards and you're using a full selection that are including all the crazy things if you want to do that, you can do that with Kill Team. They did actually bring out a, you know, randomized mission card pack. Now, the ones that I recall tended to be quite well tailored and tend to be quite good for match play. So there was a real limited selection of them. Uh, the combinations of them tended to be quite tame. So you didn't get such wild differences as you did with Warcry. But with Warcry, you could also do that. So there's like a symbol indicating which ones you're supposed to be doing for, um, for, for your match play games. It's just because you get all the others, people have a tendency to start into it with a full selection rather than tailoring them down. So you can play both games using the random missions. Now, if you are doing it for a tournament, neither game is drawing random missions. That's not how tournament level play happens for either game instead you're going to have um you know pre-done battle plans you're going to know which they are ahead of time they might be randomized in your order and um, sometimes what happens is you'll have six and then you'll only end up playing four but going in you're not complete you're not playing like wild crazy lose first turn kind of random games which i think people have picked up as a bad perception for war cry Kill Team never went down that direction. They certainly could if they wanted to. We might start seeing a few of those kind of cases uh, in the new edition if they choose to. Um, and like that is just for for these narrative games, you know, you can do some crazy things because the story is kind of fun uh, and it can make some interesting games, but it, it's purely perception. So one of the case I'm making here is that Warcry has been given these battle plan cards at the start you get them in your starter box you don't get them in kill team 
You can buy them for kill team, but you don't get them straight away. For those battle plan cards for Warcry, they include match play ones, but they also include all of the rest. Uh, and I think if you were to play just the match play ones versus kill team's match play ones, you would probably get a kind of a similar idea, but that is not what you do if you're playing competitively. If you're playing competitively, you have pre-done missions. Now, another concern or question that we've had is in relation to uh, the, the deployment. So there are two different approaches to deployment here. So on the left, we've got the, this one of the random maps from Warcry. So you can see here, it's got a dagger, it's got a shield, and it's got a hammer. And one of the things that you do is you split your groups into three, and then they will assign at certain points. Sometimes they do not come in uh, on the first turn. So you might have your dagger come in on turn two or turn three. Um, in some cases, that is actually preferable because it helps speed up the game. So there is a reason for it. Beginners or novices of Warcry don't know how to split them up. They randomly make groups. And then when they start into a game and you know one of, and they, they get screwed over by one of the deployments, then they think this is a bad game because I've lost because my deployments are wrong. If you're going into a tournament, you get to see what all the deployments are ahead of time. Now, typically, there will be variation across those, um, as in you might have one where your dagger is starting turn two for one, your hammer is starting turn two for another, your shield is starting turn two for the third. But they are ones where you can sit down, you can assess what you're doing, and the good competitive Warcry players will know how to assign those. So the argument that this approach is casual, I think falls flat when you talk to some of the competitive Warcraft players. And that is totally fine. If you're a competitive kill team player, you know that when you're making your deployments, and as you can see, they've got a zone where they can make deployments. When you're making deployments, you can lose straight away if you make those deployments incorrectly. Now, you don't have it split into groups and then those groups are assigned instead you've got areas where you need to put your your operative down but if you're you know not covering a door or if you've you know just put your guys a little bit in the, uh, too far out of range so they can't move in the right position that can have a massive difference on the game so that's what's happening here there are just two different approaches and i do believe that when kill team players look at warcry they don't fully understand what's happening um, and that's why they think it's agile. Now, I'm not making the argument the other way because uh, there's no argument that Kill Team isn't competitive on that, that regard. Can we say it's casual? Um, I mean, anyone can play Kill Team casually. You just put your operatives down where you think looks cool. That's casual play, you know what I mean? So we don't need to make an argument for kill team to be casual because you can do it. What we can say is it is trickier to understand what you're supposed to do um, on the board. Now I'm saying for Warcry that it's actually tricky to understand how you're supposed to split those groups up, but you can randomly split them up. You, you know, you will get into bad situations, but you can randomly split them up and start playing, which I think is why people kind of enjoy Warcry. It's a little bit faster to get playing. But when you set someone down with Kill Team, there's a lot of decision making to go on, which seems weird because you're just placing your guys down. But because one makes the decisions before the game and one makes the decisions as the game is starting in your deployment, they're two very different approaches. And I think the approach with Kill Team, where you need to be a little bit more strategic in the placement of your operatives, uh, adds as a little bit of a barrier for new players. Okay, so my case here, strong, what I'm trying to make, and my may or may not have made it, is that there is method to the madness of Warcry groups, and that the criticism that some players have, typically kill team players who have only dabbled in Warcry, is that uh, the criticism that, that it, it's casual and you can lose first turn is actually to be blunt, a skill issue that once you kind of understand the game a little bit more, you get past the idea that it is completely random, then you can understand what you need to do and where you need to go with it. 
All right. Next thing I want to talk about is team building. So this is a Warcry team, and this is one of the new scout uh, teams for Kill Team. So we're going to start in Warcry. So this is a um, Iron Golems warband. Now, if you look in this, you can see that I've got two Ogre Breachers. Only one Ogre Breacher comes in a box. We've added in some Iron Legionnaires because they're nice and cheap. And then I've got Skavok Plague Seeker, who is a hero from the Skaven Warband. So we're already getting a little bit of mixing, which we don't see in Kill Team. And because Skavok is a Bladeborn, so he's one of the Underworld Warbands, he is able to, and he and he is the leader for that, he is able to bring in someone from his Bladeborn group, uh, which is why we've got the little, little rat down at the bottom. So... There's a bunch of different things here. So obviously we're spending points to put these together. Points aren't a thing in Kill Team anymore. They were in one of the older editions. They're not there anymore. We're able to stretch into other Warbands, kind of pick up some heroes. Uh, we can pick, you know, as many Ogre Breachers as we want to add into the Warband based on the points. And, you know, yeah, we've, we've got a, a good amount of options. So, to a certain extent, this makes it easier just to kind of pick up the fighters you have, models you have, and put them into a warband and play something with it. Now, at a high level, tweaking it can get a little more complex. You'll talk about, um, you know, having cheap chaff to kind of move the position. Uh, you'll have to understand how your big guys are going to be able to take out their big guys. There are a lot of kind of meta elements that are in there. But in the short term, to start in, it's quite easy to put together a warband with just some of the models you have work out the points total, and then uh, double check that you don't have too many heroes or too many um, allies or anything like that, and then you can play, and then you're good to go. With the kill team selection, what you do is you essentially have a unit, and then it's the equipment that changes. So you can see this scout, we have to pick a scout sergeant, and then there's three different options for what we equip them with. Then we have a number of normal scouts, uh, and then we pick. So we've got a bunch of specialists. They call them specialists. And then that one at the bottom, the scout warrior, is kind of the default option. But even then, we've got a few different choices here. So we can only pick one operative once. Now, this is the thing that really frustrates me with Kill Team. Usually, there is a best list for each of these teams. Um, and what you can do is you can build all the models for them and then flex as you're going into the battle. So you typically you'll build a roster and then you'll select from that roster to actually field. So there's a little bit of a, what would you call it? There's a little bit of a army build that happens after you see your opponent and you're, you're getting to put down, which is cool. I, I do like that. What really frustrates me though is when I buy this box, I don't know what to assemble. You know, I, I'll go on to some of the channels and I'll have a read up and I'll try to find out, you know, do I give that scout sergeant the start his shotgun or do I give him the bolt gun or do I give him the chainsaw? Like, which which do I start with? Um, and sometimes the choice is buy all three just so you have the options and you can do it. But as someone coming into it fresh and new, I don't really know what I'm doing. But if I skip back over to the kill or to the Warcry side, that Dominar has one build, the Ogre Reacher has one build, the Iron Legionnaire has one build. Like there are other options. Like you can get Iron Legionnaires with two weapons, you can have Iron Legion with a flail, but typically in the box, you're just going to get that one option. Some of the Warcry Warbands do have some selections and do have some options. Um uh, yeah, a classic one is the uh, the Savagers, the leader, can be equipped with a two-handed sword or a two-handed or a, a big axe, a great axe. And yeah, I think one was better in one edition and the other was better in the other edition. So there are kind of some decisions and some choices. But I have found personally that for kill team, getting your kill team assembled, ready to paint, is a lot more of a struggle because there are choices you need to make. And a lot of the time, you know, you will find weird quirks like that sniper and that tracker might need to be built from the same body. So you either need to get two boxes or you need to um, pick one and just just feel that one. And then you need to have a better understanding of when you're facing 
your scouts against, you know, a Dire Avenger Eldar team, whatever, a, a specific kill team that you pick certain operatives and you make certain flexes. But to a certain extent, there is already an optimal choice within this particular selection. And because it's quite a narrow selection, um, a lot more of the expression is around how you play it and how you position and how you choose versus uh, your opponents. And then also how you equip them, how you gear them, um, because you will have some equipment options that go along with it. So yeah, so that element uh, can be quite important and is very different. It's a very different way uh, to actually approach the game. It's also notable, and uh, we kind of glossed over it earlier, that when you're looking at the operative cards uh, for a Warcry character, you tend to just have what you have. And what they'll do is they'll, uh, yeah, for the Iron Legionnaire, the option with two weapons rather than a, a hammer and shield will have another card. Whereas often with uh, the cards for the operatives and kill team, for example, that's Cat Warrior, they will list all the weapons. So they'll list the Astarte Shotgun, the Fist, the Bolt Gun, Bolt Pistol, and the Combat Blade. And then you will need to know which of those weapons you have when you're actually doing it. It's a minor thing, um, but for someone coming brand new in, it kind of adds a lot more text. It adds a lot more uh, kind of features. And also we're looking at a lot more elements like the special abilities, uh, weapon traits, and kind of the static things apart from the, the kind of CP elements. So there's a lot going on. But they are still, we're still playing essentially the same game, but we're getting it presented very differently. So with Warcry, we've kind of got a more expansive and more kind of inclusive um, list building. And we're using the kind of classic point system. Whereas with Kill Team, what they've decided to go for is a really constrained list building option that gives them a lot more control when they're balancing around these lists. So we have seen cases where they've decided that one of the lists is too weak. So they've literally just added in an extra operative into it. So you might get an extra scout warrior. So rather than just a normal eight, you get an extra one. Typically though, we do see cases where, um, yeah, so we've seen eight scouts. So typically what you'll end up doing is you'll get two of those heavy gunners you'll get one hunter, one sniper, one tracker. So that, that's five operatives there. And then you'll get three of the scout warriors. And that's essentially because the scout warriors are inferior to specialists. So you will always take the max number of specialists that you are legally able to take, and you will always run those. Whereas with the points system, you don't have that same incentive. And we've seen this with a few of the games, like um, 40K has moved kind of over to this, where you'll have all the options and they, they, to simplify the, the construction, they don't give you points for it. And all that meant is that you'll always take the most busted stuff that you can. Not saying it's a problem, but it is what it is. Uh, so when you remove points, you are incentivized to take the best options you can. And in a way that does actually constrain list building. All right. So yeah, I've, I've been talking and I've been ranting for a while and the last kind of element to kind of consider and to look at is the casual versus competitive play. First off, okay, what is competitive play? Competitive play is essentially where people are, you know, optimizing, where you really focus on winning. To a certain extent, it is a case where skill is manifest and where the random nature of the game is lessened such that uh, the players who are gonna win are gonna be the players who are actually best at the game. Classic and bad example of that is actually um, Rock Scissors Paper. And I say it's a bad example because there is a competitive scene on that and some people do win more than others, but arguably, realistically, it should be completely random. You know, it's always essentially going to be well, not 50, because I guess you can tie, but it should be completely random. The way Warcry is pitched often has a lot more random elements in it. So we talked about the mission generation, and that's very randomized. Now you can, and competitive players do, tailor those, so you've actually got competitive missions. So let's push that to the side for a second. 
The next thing people will talk about is uh, the dice system, how you you know roll your dice and then you it, it's simple. And they'll sometimes talk about how it is simple and that simple doesn't have a lot of depth. That's not true though, because once you start looking at uh, the actual numbers and you look at the abilities, there is more depth to it than is maybe initially manifest. With Kill Team, you do have both sides of that role. Hopefully, I've successfully made the case that um, there, that granularity doesn't actually do much beyond make you feel better about rolling your defense dice. Yeah, okay, I know that might be a bit of a, a controversial one to say, but essentially there's a mathematical probability on number of points that you're going to, damage points you're going to do in both systems. The granularity, however, does let you have more traits and abilities. And those traits and abilities are the ones that actually make kill team um, complicated. It's probably the bad word for it, but I think a little bit more complicated. There's so many different options and then they kind of confound the the algorithm to work out the damage. So that isn't something that Warcry has, but it doesn't necessarily need it to become competitive. So arguably those elements increase some of the random nature, or at least the defense increases some of the random nature of it. And um, those extra rerolls are ways to mitigate some of the randomness. Yeah, anyway, uh, so that, that's a, a significant difference between them. So that, that is kind of the argument that some people make against Warcry, that it's too simple. I don't think that's the case. I do think you get a lot more interesting traits and abilities in Kill Team. But if you wanted to, you could flip that around. Like you could remove most of those special cases and you could um, add a bunch of extra traits onto Warcry if you wanted to add you know, more re-rolls and reduce the opponent's uh, toughness and a bunch of things like that. Um, okay, so yeah, on to the, the randomness. What was the third point we were looking at? Oh, yeah, we briefly talked about how the mission deployments worked. Again, I think that's a perception. Uh, there is a, a somewhat of a random element in it in that you are choosing where your, um, where your battle groups are going. So that's your shield, your hammer, and your dagger. You know, you're going to be planning how they group out ahead of time. So to a certain extent, Warcry does throw you into the situation and then you have to think on your feet, which some people love from a casual sense, but some of the more competitive players have done the numbers, have worked out kind of the optimal groupings and the optimal plays depending on the scenarios. So I dispute the idea that some kill team players have had that it is um, less competitive. You just have to kind of think a few levels ahead. Similarly, once someone shows you how to optimally deploy in kill team, I think you're probably always going to deploy that way. So is that competitive in that there's a right and a wrong way to do things? And knowing the right way makes you the more competitive player? Yeah, I mean, there's a, certainly an argument to that. Uh, it's not necessarily something I like. I kind of prefer uh, having to think on my feet and kind of getting thrown into it. But I can definitely see in a, in a tournament scenario where you've got two kill teams going up against each other, if you know how to place your kill team best, you've got a better chance of winning. So that's more of an expression of uh, skill. Uh, but that does happen. It just happens earlier. It happens in the construction of your lists with Warcry, where you know which of the, the three groups they're going to be going to. Okay, what other kind of elements of randomness do we have? And um, we talked a little bit about the list construction. There's definitely a lot more variety in the list construction for Warcry. Whereas I do think typically and largely there is a specific list for each of the kill teams that are going to be better. So a certain combination of operatives are going to be better 99% of the time. And then you can look at the numbers and you can see how each of the kill teams are comparing because there's kind of a limited pool. Warcry doesn't have that to such an extent. Um, but has kind of a flip issue problem, problem, I'm not sure, where because you're able to use allies and heroes across all the warbands in a single ground alliance, you tend to have a lot of them turn up. So we did um, some of the, yeah, some of the chaos 
uh, allies were turning up regularly and did end up with a little bit of a, a points adjustment uh, to try and discourage their inclusion. Um, and, you know, that's the sort of thing we also see in Kill Team. But they tend to tailor a specific warband that isn't winning. They'll give them better options. They'll give them better list um, equipment or however. They'll, they'll improve it somehow. But they do it internally. So the, the lists are kind of a little bit more locked in and they're just trying to improve that particular list. So, yeah, I think the expression is maybe a little bit better in the list construction for Warcry, which to a certain extent is a skill expression, whereas with uh, Kill Team, you know, I think you kind of can work out what the, the meta is. And typically there's um, a few options near the top that are going to be winning a lot more often. So we've certainly seen times in Kill Team's history where there's been one or two lists that just everyone should be taking, and they know they should be taking. Um, does that make it more competitive or not? I think it makes maybe a little less competitive, which is a weird thing of saying. Uh, I think if there was, if there's only one winning list, that that's less competitive because there's less expression of skill, and you're just kind of picking whatever is the kind of net listed option. Okay, we're circling around things, but I think it is largely a perception based thing. So let's try flip things around. If Kill Team, the new edition, comes with a card pack like Warcry does to generate random missions, and it has a bunch of them that are kind of wacky and crazy that pushes it a little bit more towards a feel of casual. Similarly, if you were to do the same with Warcry and include none of those randomly generated missions, and instead you just had like five very well tailored match play missions, then you're getting a similar. Again, if we kind of flip the construction round, we could maybe have a little bit more options on Kill Team. Going back to the previous edition where you were able to maybe mix and match a little bit more. Now, obviously with uh, Kill Team, I don't think you were ever able to, you know, put Tau and Space Marines in the same list as an example. But you were able to do a bunch of weird things, like you were able to add captains and um, chaplains and kind of weird things in like that. I will say that that particular period of Kill Team was, very, was quite wild and wacky and unbalanced. And I don't think that was particularly... Uh, necessarily that competitive purely because the once that we added in uh, all those leaders things got a bit out of whack and then obviously there were jokes about adding in vehicles and eventually adding in titans the point there being that there was a little bit more list expression in theory uh, where you know you could kind of tailor things that said my tau list did have maximum number of rail guns and as many drones i could fit in so yeah maybe maybe not Maybe that doesn't really uh, add too much to the, the game, but it's certainly a way, it's an approach, it's kind of a, a style that you could do. Obviously, we don't think they're going to do it with Kill Team. We doubt we're going to see yeah, the, the expansion out. Instead, they seem happy enough doing very tight, limited, bespoke teams. So each team will be kind of specific. But what we might start seeing is we might start seeing less of the specialists, and I think that will be possibly good uh, for the entry level. So again, one of the kind of elements that makes Warcry casual, I'm using quotation marks, sorry, I'm not on screen so you can't see it, is that you buy your box, you build your box, you play your game. You don't have special abilities, you don't have special traits, there's a lot less reading, There's the options are basically build what you have and put it on the table and you're good to go. Whereas with Kill Team, there is a more of a barrier, I feel, in actually assembling that Kill Team. You need to work out exactly which of the best specialists, but it's really frustrating. Um, I've got a few kill teams that are just sitting there waiting for me to, to work out how I'm supposed to build them, which is really unfortunate. Uh, similarly, you have a lot more uh, traits and abilities. When I, I do have a Warcry card generator and I do have a kill team card generator, the kill team cards that I put together spend a lot more time uh, writing out the special abilities and writing out the, you know exactly what each of them do for reference. So it does make the game a little bit faster because I can quickly uh, check them and do them. But there's certainly a lot more reading involved. Uh, does that make the game more competitive? I don't think so. No, not necessarily. But it does make the barrier to entry a lot higher because you've got a lot more work to work out what maybe a basic weapon with a special ability does rather than just looking at the numbers and rolling the dice. What else do I have to say? I know there's a lot of rambling in here. 
hopefully I did make the case that these are essentially the same games. They're both skirmish games. They're both um, four turns. You activate each operative or fighter. Once each turn, they typically get two actions. Actions often are, you know, move dash or move move and move fight or move shoot. Um, they do have their own special abilities. So either the command points for kill team or the hero dice that Warcry uses. Uh, often the missions that they have don't always involve killing things. You know, sometimes it's about controlling areas, controlling sectors, controlling zones. And yeah, and then after that, it's just perception. So if someone is telling you that Warcry is a casual game, just nod and smile. That's fine. They, you know, they could think that. You can then go check out um, some of the, the more competitive Warcry channels and you can kind of see the lists and see what people who play competitive Warcry are talking about. And then you can flip over to the Kill Team side. Like if people are saying Kill Team is pure competitive, I think they're wrong. I think you can get some great casual games, some great narrative games if you want. I think if... I think the list construction is or li building the warband is a lot harder. Building a kill team box is a little harder because you need to have it. But if someone tells you exactly what you're supposed to make, what equipment options you're supposed to take, and you know gives you the and sets it up for you, and then you just get to play the game out with there, and you've got reference cards for all of your abilities, all of your weapons, all your stuff, then it's a fun casual game. There's just a little bit more kind of prep involved, and that's that's kind of the outside the game aspect. Uh, there, so I honestly don't think there is a lot more to separate the games than there is to the ways that they are similar, and especially as we're about to see, as far as I'm aware, this, the line of sight rules get simplified for Kill Team. I think that maybe was a bit of an obstacle for people getting in to enjoy the game. But then kind of the deeper elements of the game, I do think they are on par. Uh, in both games, it is about kind of understanding what your team can do and what your opponent's team can do and then what the kind of options there are. Now, Kill Team does have maybe a few more decisions that you can make during your initial construction. We did start seeing that with uh, Warcry when we got the Divine Blessings. So Divine Blessings technically can float. Um, so they're like plus one attack to one of your fighters. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It can be, you know, uh, extra wounds or something like that. And that's something that you would choose at the start of a fight after you've seen what your opponent has. A lot of uh, tournaments don't worry about that. They just um, incorporate it into the initial building. And often, you know, you'll kind of pick plus one attack on one of your big guys. So it'd be a real killer. So we're beginning to see kind of some of those elements creep in. We're also, we've also recently got the battle traits for Warcry, which are kind of a little bit more similar to uh, the, the static abilities, the non-CP abilities that we have in Kill Team. So, you know, either game could go either direction. I think Warcry has a lower barrier to entry in that there are certain aspects where you can just get it out, get it on the table. And uh, whereas I think Kill Team you know, you need to learn a little bit more to get into that. The high level of Warcry is is deep. I don't think people necessarily understand how deep it is, but it is bounded randomness that people have to kind of work through. So you've got your hero dice, you have to understand how your hero dice work, whereas you've got the CP, and the CP is a little bit easier to understand, it's a lot more static. Um, uh, but you kind of tend to have a specific plan with those, whereas with the hero dice, you need to be a little bit more flexible, a little more reactionary. Similarly with uh, deployments, deployments and kill team, uh, I think depending on the map can be a lot more static. You either know what you're supposed to be doing or you don't. Whereas with uh, Warcry, you are trying to assess all of the all of the different options for missions that you could have. And then if you have, like if you if you knew this one mission you're going to be playing on, you could very highly tailor uh, your split across the the three battle groups, which would make for um, a yeah a, a very interesting game so sometimes it's better to kind of know three or four and kind of try plan for all of those but it is something that the high level of war cry play you will understand and you will know okay i feel like i'm circling around things i enjoy both of these games i have certainly enjoyed teaching war cry to people more than I have uh, teaching Kill Team. 
But I'm hoping that's going to change because, as I said, we're looking at Kill Team opening up solo play and co-op play. I am super, super, super excited for Kill Team co-op play. I'm going to be painting up my Gaunt's Ghosts. I'm going to take out my uh, my Necrons, my uh, Gene Stealer, my Gene Stealer Cult, my uh, Chaos Cultus. I've got a ton of models that are going to be great bad guys. Um, and then you know, I've got other heroes. I've got my Acolytes. I've got my Inquisitor Eisenhorn. And I've got you know some of the, the, the models kind of around that warband. These are going to be great narrative, casual, fun games. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare cards and keep an eye out. I am going to be updating the Kill Team card generator that I have to align with the, the new stats, new system that they have. So we'll probably get that done in the next month or two. And I'm going to present it so someone casual, someone can just sit down having never played Kill Team before, and we're going to have a fun, exciting, story-driven game. So... I mean, that's as, as casual as you can get. And that's where I want to go with Kill Team. Um, and I think you can do it. And similarly, we've got tons of stuff in competitive Warcry, amongst the Warcry community. And it's a lot deeper than I think uh, the average person is going to understand because they're only coming at it from the kind of casual perspective. But book games, you can play them either way. And really, it is all just perception. All right. That's me done. Thank you very much if you've stuck all the way through. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you, if, if you're a Warcry fan, I hope you look at Kill Team a little bit more and kind of uh, look forward to the new edition. And if you're a Kill Team player who kind of came in uh, expecting to be angry at someone over, over selling them on Warcry, please do have a look at the links. I'll give you some links to some of the competitive elements of Warcry. And then maybe it'll be something that you'll kind of get a new aspect to. Because largely, they're basically the same game. Just one is fantasy and one is sci-fi. And they have their own spin on things. All right. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week, I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.